Hi everyone, Stepan here. Uh, I am going to continue covering games uh, from the last tournament I played. This was the round 5 game and after 4 rounds I had 1 win, 1 loss and 2 draws. Which is okay considering that all of my opponents were higher rated than me. Uh, in this game I was paired against uh, what I think is a very tricky opponent, a very experienced opponent who's been playing chess for a long time and has had some great results against very strong players. And throughout his career, my opponent has been playing pawn to d4. And I've been preparing something for this game, something that I've never played before, which I'm not going to talk about now because it didn't happen. But anyway, I was preparing for a long time and we get to the board and he plays e4. I mean, I was aware that he played it like two or three times before but a long time ago and compared to probably 200 games with d4 there are two e4 games okay so i had no idea what he was going to play whether he prepared something or not so i just played the karo khan and he played the brayer which if i think if you're going to surprise someone with pawn to e4 and that someone plays the karo khan then the brayer is really not the variation to to go for because it's not challenging enough of course there are a couple of ways for black to play i play the way korchno used to play it uh, and I, I learned this setup and i like it so after white plays knight to d2 you simply go g6 and you have a very simple plan you want to go bishop g7 e5 knight to e7 similar to what you would do in the rosolimo sicilian except that this pawn is on d5 not on c5 but other than that it's it's a very similar opening with similar ideas okay so pawn to g3 bishop to g7 bishop to g2 e5 and here my opponent played a move i've never seen before usually knight f3 is played here and i think it's the only move played here uh, with the idea of castling playing rook e1 and provoking uh, the closing of the position by black my opponent played knight e2 uh, which could serve to support f4, but I don't think the knight is as active because there isn't there isn't any pressure on my center for the moment. Uh, with the knight on f3, there's usually some issues with the pawn on e5. And with the knight being developed to e2, I could even consider playing knight f6 because knighting is attacking the e5 pawn. But I didn't want to risk playing a set I a setup I don't understand, didn't want to block my bishop, so I just played knight e7, which is okay, I think both are fine. He castled, I castled, and now pawn to c3. Uh, this, I, I think, is, a, is just a mistake. Uh, makes room for the queen, uh, perhaps prepares d4, but weakens the d3 pawn, and it's, it's not that hard to get to the d3 pawn. So I don't like the move c3. Uh, I, I don't know what to suggest. Maybe even b3 is okay. And just developing the bishop this way. I don't see why b3 would be worse than c3. Other than that, you can, I don't know, take and, and, and go knight f3. Uh, I, I'm not sure what to suggest. I think this knight on e2 is a weird piece. Okay, uh, so he played c3 and I just continued normally with knight to d7. And the follow-up to c3 uh, is logical. I mean, he played queen b3, but unfortunately queen b3 is is a dreadful move, uh, which just gains a tempo for, for black. I can just go knight c5. And if you've ever seen my London system games with black, this is a pattern that occurs very often when people play both e4 and c4. This knight comes from d7 to c5 and attacks e4 and d3 and it's not easy to defend. Uh, obviously the queen just has to drop back. Uh, the pawn has to be defended because there's the bishop at the end of the line and I'm. if he doesn't retreat his queen then I win a pawn and the bishop pair. So queen to c2 at least not wasting a full tempo. And now how do I get double pressure on d3? I just exchange on e4. Uh, if he takes with one of his pieces, or if he takes with the knight, I take on d3. If he takes with the bishop, I get the bishop pair. 
so he has to take with the pawn. And now there are two options here. I, according to the engine, I chose the wrong one. What I played is fine, and black should have a slight advantage. With the engine line, black should be winning already. And the engine wants to play queen d3. I didn't want to play queen d3. So the point is, the queens have to be traded off. And since I'm going to be winning the bishop pair, it's better to have the queens off the board because then my bishops are going to be more potent. I'm not going to be attacking the white king, I'm just going to be dominating the position. If the queen retreats, declines the queen trade, then rook d8. And now, well, now black's major pieces are just dominating the whole board. So if something like this happens, you're going to grab the bishop and have a better position. In the game, I didn't even consider queen d3, I didn't want to trade queens, I wanted to win the bishop pair and start attacking, so I played knight d3. Uh, I mean, why not? Uh, my opponent played knight c4, and I had a long thing here. Uh, if I take on c1 straight away, uh, then I really don't have a good square for my queen. Because if I take on c1, he may uh, throw in rook to d1. Uh, so I played b5 first. The idea behind b5 is that now rook to d1 doesn't work, because I can just take the knight and defend my knight. And once the knight retreats, and it did retreat to e3, I can just take on c1. And if rook d1 is thrown in here, I can just play queen b6. Now I've made a good square for my queen. So b5 is okay. Uh, there may be better moves, I'm not sure. Okay, apparently everything is okay. Bishop e6, knight takes c1 and b5. But I, I liked making a square for my queen in advance, so I think b5 is okay. Okay, uh, he played knight e3, takes uh, rook a takes, and I played queen b6 in anticipation of a rook coming to the d file. But he, he played a different move, after which I had the longest thing of the game. Uh, he played pawn to c4, and this move uh, troubled me a lot. <clears throat> so what I want to do, uh, ideally I want to play bishop h6, because my bishop is stuck behind my own pawn, and I want to put pressure on the knight on e3. Uh, once that happens, I may even consider moves like f5 and bringing my knight to the game, putting extra pressure on e3. So I wanted to use the fact that I have a dark squared bishop and he doesn't. c4 disrupts that, especially since I haven't even connected my rooks yet. If my bishop was an e6, this would be no trouble at all. In fact, I could just trade everything off and win the b2 pawn. Uh, but it's not. So now my opponent actually has a threat, uh, or I thought he did. So, in my mind, if I don't do anything, he's going to take, take and play queen c7. Queen c7 is a double threat, attacking the right, threatening to double my pawns on the b-file. If my pawns get doubled on the b-file, uh, probably any endgame is, is worse for me, even though I do have the bishop pair. Because if you can imagine the knight coming to c4, excuse me, to b4, blockading these pawns, which shouldn't be hard to do. Uh, you can play knight c1, knight d3, knight b4. Let's get rid of the arrows. And I have pawns here. That end game is just better for white. So, I was considering moves uh, like a6. This was my main candidate move, so that if takes, I can take with the a pawn, simply preventing queen c7 by brute force. But then I saw a line uh, which I liked, and I ended up playing bishop a6 in the end. You can pause the video and try to figure it out for yourself. This is an interesting position. So I did play bishop e6. My opponent didn't take on b5, uh, which I was happy to see. He played c5, which I was happy to see. I think c5 is not a good move. Had he taken, then of course I, I have to take with the pawn because I need to control the c4 square. Otherwise, if this happens, then I could be in trouble. Also, this could be nice. Uh, so I took, and had he played queen c7 and taken b5, I would have played knight c8. This, sh this actually defends the knight, defends the queen. And the only problem I saw with this line when I was calculating it was knight d5. But I can just take, 
take, take on c7, rook takes c7, and go knight d6. And once this knight blockades the pass d pawn, I don't think black should be in any trouble at all. I did give back the bishop pair, it's an opposite colored bishop position. I don't think there's enough to win here, but still I'm playing against an isolated pawn with, without too much material on the board. And should be good for me. Or fine for me. Uh, okay. Uh, but after bishop e6, he played c5. And this I was really happy to see. Now his pieces are never coming in. Uh, he cannot use the d6 square. Of course, uh, he played I don't, He played b3 here, defending his pawn. Uh, if I'm stupid and I play b4 and he gets to play knight c4, knight d6, then fine. You know, white is great, but... I'm not going to play b4. So c5 doesn't really gain space because it doesn't create any outposts. Or it does, but it's really hard to use them. Uh, you could try using them with your rooks, but I'm more than fast enough to challenge them with my own rooks. Okay, I just played rook ad8, which I thought was the most natural move. Uh, he played rook c to d1, which is probably correct. This rook isn't doing anything on the c file anymore. And here I played king h8, which is a weird move, uh, but I wanted to get away from the light squares. And in some cases, uh, in some cases, I wanted to get my knight to g8. So my knight doesn't have any good squares, and I, there really is no future for that knight on the queen side, unless I play b4, which we've already discussed. On the other hand, if I can get my knight to g8 and then maybe to h6, so for example, white does nothing. Let's just make a couple of moves for white. Okay, if I can get in this position, then this knight is a great piece. Okay, so, so that was the idea. Also, I, I, I get away from the light squares. The dark squares are defended enough in my mind because he has no dark square bishop. Okay, uh, alternatively, uh, I should mention that the engine says king h8 is just garbage, it's a stupid move, but I wanted to improve my piece. The engine wants to play h5, which if I'm going to be improving my knight, I think is a good move, but after, I, I don't know, knight c1, let's go to d3, uh, bishop h6 is the idea, which without my queen on b6, I, I'm not sure I want to take on e3. In fact, I'm sure I don't want to take on e3. Uh, and my knight is still a bad piece. So I, I don't think this is a natural plan. Okay, I played king h8. He played f4. Uh, putting pressure on, on, the, on the pawn on e5. I'm not really afraid of that. So I just played bishop h6. And my opponent used the weakness of king h8 and bishop h6 by playing queen to c3. But I'd anticipated that and I'd already decided to play pawn to f6. Uh, now my bishop is good, uh, this pawn is defended sufficiently, and I don't see a problem with my position. For an active plan, I have to be honest, I'm still, I'm still struggling. But I had an idea, and that was to weaken the d5 square. If I can weaken the d5 square with an eventual f5, then I can use the square and get my pieces rolling forward. So that was sh sh sort of the long-term plan for me. I didn't know how I was going to achieve it because there's a lot of stuff going on, but that's what I wanted. And at this point, my opponent started attacking and I believed I had a great position throughout the game. Uh, and suddenly I was on the defensive. I wasn't too afraid, which is uncommon for me. Usually when I'm under attack, I, I get stressed and start playing poorly. In this game, I played okay and I wasn't stressed. But when he played g4, I don't know. <laughs> I, I wanted to be white, psychologically at least. Uh, it should be a great position for black, almost winning. Uh, but looks scary. I played bishop g7, which is a bad move. So, if you turn on the engine here, it wants to play b4, which never occurred to me. Uh, in fact, I, I, I don't even understand it. Okay, b4, what if queen takes? Takes. Aha, okay, it just distracts the queen from the f6 pawn. Okay, I, the, this is 
at least for me, really hard to find. But the point is to distract the queen from the f6 pawn so that you can trade here. I played bishop g7, which has the same idea, I just want to take. Uh, so he played f5, and this I was really happy to see, uh, because now, whenever he advances his pawns or does something, he's either going to weaken d5 or have no attack. So I played bishop g8, just waiting. He played g5, and now gf5. Okay, and after ef5, I have the d5 square, and I was really happy here. So, I played knight d5, and it may look scary for me, but really, he has no useful way to improve his pieces, and I don't see how the white attack continues. Uh, okay, for the moment, he has to do something, his queen is attacked, so he can either move the queen, uh, or trade i thought he should have traded he did trade but he traded in a way which loses the game in one move and i just couldn't believe what he did i played knight d5 and actually I, I was waiting for him to make his move instantly i was just expecting knight to d5 and after knight to d5 i can take with the pawn or i can take with the bishop the idea with cd5 uh, is to well create something here but after knight to g3 i i'm not sure i want to take with the pawn i think i would have traded off the light squared bishops of course now if he takes again i have a choice uh, probably i would have taken with the rook and i think this should be slightly better for white uh, because white has more space but if white isn't careful and either this pawn advances or this pawn falls or something happens with this bishop then I think black has a great position objectively those should be about equal but my opponent took with the bishop and here is why this loses which I saw before he took I, I just take CD and now he's losing to Tempi okay so now I'm just threatening to win a piece and then I'm threatening the knight on e2, and then the c5 pawn falls with check. So, when he played bishop d5, I actually thought for 15 minutes to see whether I'd missed something. If you remember my game from round 1, when my opponent allowed a winning tactic for me, it was actually winning for him. So here I had a long think, and I didn't want to miss anything. But I couldn't see anything, and I just took cd5. He has to move one of his pieces and then the other. So he played knight g4. I played d4 attacking the queen. And here uh, he played the losing, losing blunder. After his next move, uh, there is a sequence of moves that just wins material. And after his next move, he can resign. What he has to do is blockade. So he has to play queen d3. Where I still cannot take... On, on c5 because my f pawn is dropping I need to keep my queen over here so that when takes takes knight takes I can play queen g7 check and and actually win the knight back but there are a couple of good moves uh, I can take on g5 firstly that's a free pawn uh, but I would have played pawn to e4 and I'd actually calculated this and this cannot be taken if queen takes e4 I can actually play d3 and white's position is just crumbling. I'm going to take on c5. My bishops are coming into the game. And th this is crushing for black. But blockading the pawn was still the best idea. Instead, he played queen to g3. And now this is just black to play and win. And a really simple black to play and win. Using the fact that the king and the knight are going to be double attacked in the end. Uh, it, it's not a hard calculation. So d3, okay, uh, and if the knight moves away, then you take on c5, or you just push and make a queen. So gf6, okay, queen c5 check, the king has to move, and it has to move to g2, and now bishop takes f6, and this double attack is going to be deadly. He took knight f6. I took d2 because I'm threatening to take the rook with check, and after he moved the rook, I played queen c6 check, and my opponent resigned. 
uh, this is going to be more than a piece up uh, I, I don't know where, where the king goes uh, I, I, something like this maybe I, I have no idea no this is actually with check so so maybe I don't know king g1 but in any case my opponent is losing a piece so I was getting attacked but then when I got the d5 square my position just became great so as soon as he played g5 i took on uh, i took on f5 and if he takes with the knight he could take with the knight and then then take with the rook that's okay but then i think all the pressure is gone and i just have the bishop pair so he took with the pawn uh and then knight d5 and taking with the bishop is just a hor horrible blunder Okay, so this was my round 5 game. I was really happy to get a win in with the black pieces. So this tournament, so far in 5 rounds, after 5 rounds, I had 2 wins and 1 draw with black, which is really good. Since I was struggling with the black pieces previously and had sort of poor results. Uh, thank you for watching. See you tomorrow for my favorite game of the tournament. Stay tuned for more chess. Bye-bye.